Hey guys, it's Miss Jekka, and I bet you cannot guess where I am. Hinty, hinty. I'm wearing a Dartmouth t-shirt, standing in front of Dartmouth Hall. Okay, I'm at Dartmouth College in Hanover, New Hampshire. Um, and I'm here to tell you about the friendship of two, two men who are really important in founding this college. One was named Samson Ockham, and the other was Eleazar Wheelock. And in addition to having like amazing names, Samson, Ockham, Eleazar, Wheelock, you had to admit that's those are great names. Um, their friendship uh, gives a lot of insights into kind of the power dynamics between Native Americans and colonists in the 1700s. I think it's actually super interesting. So first of all, Eliezer Wheelock, I wish I had a painting I could show you. You should Google him. Uh, looks exactly how you would picture a very, very stern New England minister in the 1700s to look like. Are you picturing uh, if you're picturing him with like black robes and just, like wig, very stern expression and kind of jowls, then you are you are picturing him absolutely accurately. Um, so he was a minister, and he he really had this mission that he wanted to educate Native American men, like young Native American men, to be ministers like him. So he wanted to convert them into Christianity and give them sort of a Western style education, and. Uh, have them be ministers. So he had a small school. This is exactly what he did. And one of his students was named Samson Ockham. So Ockham was a descendant of Uncas, who was a great Mohegan leader. Um, so obviously he himself was Mohegan. And uh, Samson Ockham was also an incredibly just intelligent individual. So Ockham receives this education with uh, Wheelock. He becomes a minister and then he starts his own ministry um, and, and becomes like a, a great leader of, of Mohegans and other, other Native Americans in the New England area. Um, inspired by this experience, Reverend Wheelock uh, has this idea that he is going to start a college, a, a school specifically for this purpose, but this time, you, you know, at a larger level, uh, he's going to have Native American young men get money from England and start this college. So he sends Samson Ockham to England because who better to convince people to donate money and get behind this cause than this really like smart, well-educated Native American minister. Um, so Ockham goes to England and he meets the Earl of Dartmouth and uh, talks the guy into giving a whole lot of money, basically. Um, when he comes back to the colonies, he discovers that his friend, Reverend Wheelock, has not been looking after his wife and kids like he promised that he would. Um, and also that Reverend Wheelock has decided to move the school. So instead of having the school in Connecticut, he puts it into New Hampshire. And the focus is no longer the education of Native American young men, but now white young men. And the reason that this happened is because the, the original location in Connecticut was just too far away from tribal lands. So that's one of the reasons that Reverend Wheelock changed it. And also, it was like a complicated situation with the money. But basically, these two men had a falling out. Um, so I think it's, it, it, it's a sad story in a way, but also interesting. Also, they have amazing names. Um, Reverend Wheelock does, in fact, um, start the college. It becomes an Ivy League school. Uh, it's actually the smallest of the eight Ivy League schools. There's only about 4,100 undergraduates, 6,000 students sold. It's really, really, really small. But you may read about it in your American history class because of something that happened here in the very, very early 1800s. So Reverend Wheelock starts the school, names it after the Earl of Dartmouth, it's called Dartmouth. Um, and after um, the colony of New Hampshire becomes a state, after the American Revolution, when we have United States instead of these colonies, uh, the state of New Hampshire decides that they just want to take it over. They just want to take it. They are not going to recognize the royal charter. They want to take it over. And so they create an institution called Dartmouth University and uh, occupy it. Um, so there was a Supreme Court case. And the lawyer in the Supreme Court case is Daniel Webster. He's one of the most famous lawyers from the 1800s. And he argued in the Supreme Court, he has this quote that people from Dartmouth love, where he says, it is, as I have said, sir, a small college, but there are those of us who love it. 99% sure I got that right. Anyway, uh, they won the case. 
And this Supreme Court case is one of the reasons why uh, the state like or government can't just take over your business because they want it. So thank you, Dartmouth College. Uh, thank you, Eleazar, Eleazar Wheelock, even though you were kind of a terrible, terrible friend to Samson Occam. And also, look up Samson Occam. This guy had a really, really fascinating life. Um, that's it. Dartmouth College. Let's check it out. No, seriously, let's check it out.